Well, it's very interesting the uh, evolution of fungi and plants on the planet. Uh, they're guessing, but say 600 million years ago, give or take 100 million, um, the algae, the, the cyanobacterium that were floating in the ocean, uh, wanted to come onto land, but it was all rock. And the only way it could happen is creating an opportunity for a symbiosis with fungi. The fungi pro providing the actual structure and the algae providing the photosynthesis. So the cyan cyanobacterium were composed a great deal of omega-3s, which is the reason why nutritionists often suggest we need to get the right ratio of those kinds of oils into our diet. We are composed of omega-3s. Um, so what happened was the fungi and uh, uh, algae coming together uh, actually created an opportunity to break down rock, which then created soil and then allowed plants and eventually trees to start to be on dry land. And that particular relationship has continued to today. In fact, there would be no plants on the planet if it were not for mycorrhizal connections. And how this works is that the, the living organism uh, creates, created from hyphae and then into mycelium, this, this is the living organism. And it creates a opportunity with root hairs from trees and other plants where there's an exchange that fungi want sugar. They need sugar. And the tree needs water and nutrients. And you're not taught this in school, but this is how it is. They actually have a create an opportunity to help each other. It's not that they really, it's not a mutualistic thing in a sense. It's really hardcore bargaining. The tree says, look, I need some water. And the fungi will go, well, give me some sugar. And so that relationship has allowed and endured for hundreds of millions of years. And so when you're in the forest, you actually often don't see the fungi except when they go to their sexual stage, which is the fruiting bodies that everybody's familiar with for eating and for medicine. It's important to remember, a, a study was done in Switzerland many years ago where a fellow took a hectare of land and he, every year he recorded what mushrooms popped up on that piece of land for 20 years. And the fellow, after 20 years, he found there were different mushrooms every year, meaning that the mycelium below the ground contained the living organisms and the fruiting bodies will pop up when they want to, when it's ideal to, to form spores to continue their life cycle. And so uh, the mycelium and the trees and plants have this really special relationship and it's important to remember that when you're out walking in the woods. Uh, the other side of it is, of course, that industrial agriculture relies heavily on fungicided seeds and fungicides and that's why there's way less fungi than there used to be. The other thing is that each type of mushroom, each species of mushroom, really preferred to have a symbiotic or mycorrhizal relationship with particular types of trees. Some like hardwoods, some like conifers, uh, some like them all. Uh, but generally speaking, when you're looking for mushrooms, you would want to look and recognize what trees have a relationship with what mushrooms and then look in those areas. For example, in this part of the woods, cedar. Cedar is heavily uh, uh, antifungal and so you're not going to really see the plethora of mushrooms under cedars that you will under some other trees or on trees. But speaking of mushrooms, right here on this stump where I'm standing, there are all kinds of what are known as xylaria. These xylaria are very microscopic. Uh, they can get a little bigger than this. And they are a whole class of medicinal mushroom that are being investigated for their anti-tumor, their cardiovascular, their uh, respiratory, their immune functioning capabilities. And uh, in the future, you're gonna see xylaria become much more prominent in the, in the fungal pharmacy. Thank you.